right, we'll get started with our post-race press conferences for the PowerShares QQQ300 here today. We are joined by our second place finisher, Joey Logano, who drives the number 22 discount tire Ford. Joey, can you just walk us through that last lap there when you tried to make the move on Chase? Mm, um, just finished second again. <laughs> uh, I mean, second's not bad, but kind of sucks at the same time. <laughs> Better way to put it, but uh, man, just so close once again. It's three races and we've been so close to winning one of them and really want to get out there and make it happen. But, um, you know, I thought the. You know, we were moving up through the field there on that restart, kind of, uh, you know, started having a good push and went out to pass Chase. Uh, and, and then the one kind of hung me out. Uh, and then I had Casey back there and the Dylan brothers and, uh, you know, all of them, they just want to win. So uh, they got the same attitude as me. And that's the type of uh, racer you need behind you. And, uh, you know, they started pushing. And, um, you know, we started slowly making the top work, slowly but surely kind of moving it up. And then, um, and then uh, you know, towards the end of, uh, the last lap, I started getting up there and, and had a good run on 88. Chase did a great job blocking uh, to the top off of two. Uh, at that point, I wasn't sure. Um, I wasn't sure if Casey was going to keep pushing me because that was his teammate. So I was like, I know Casey's not going with me anymore at this point. So uh, I felt like I was kind of on my own. And I uh, you know, started pushing Chase uh, out a little bit and was going to make that pass uh, late off of four. Um, and we went to uh, went uh, to the top, and obviously he was watching the mirror. Um, thought we were going to hit the wall, and we got, didn't. And <laughs> then by the time I got back out there, we made some contact, and the contact is what kind of killed me there. Uh, that killed my forward momentum I had to be able to pass him by the line, and I uh, just couldn't do it in time. So uh, unfortunately, we finished second again, but uh, still proud of uh, what we've done with this discount tire Ford, and um, wanted to get Brian Wilson uh, a win in his first race. That'd been really cool, and I uh, just came up a little short again. All right, well, also, we're, we are also joined by our fourth place finisher, uh, the driver of the number one, one main Chevrolet, Elliot Sadler, who finished uh, as the top NASCAR Xfinity Series points contender. Elliot, this is your sixth top five finish here at Daytona. Can you take us through that, fi that final lap there as well, please? I'm sorry, we're finishing <laughs> talking. I forgot he drove for Junior now, <laughs> not for Roush, and it confused me. You want to know why I didn't go with him down the back stretch? I, I had, I had to go together. with Chase. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I just had the oh, yeah moment. <laughs> you guys interrupted a pretty good conversation. <laughs> I don't blame you now. I was mad. Now I get it. <laughs> All right. Man, we're on the same page. Uh, what was the question again? I'm sorry. You, can you just walk us through that final lap there? Oh, yeah. Um, I had no idea that the 5 and the 22 had such a run on the outside. I was going to try to wait to turn 4 to try to make a move on Chase and just see what happens. But Joey and Casey did a great job getting up beside us and having so much momentum. And then when Chase pulled up to block them and kind of stalled the outside line, we actually pulled back in the front halfway down the back straightaway. But uh, the 6 car was just not able to push us as fast as, as what the 22 and the, the 88 could do. So, you know, we had to set up a fourth. But look, proud of my guys. First first time at the box together. And Kevin did a tremendous job, brought me a fast race car. We run in the top five all day long and, and had some fun. And we got a car in one piece to take to Talladega. But a great uh, shot of momentum for, for us moving on to Atlanta from here. All right, we're going to start up in the press box with a question. Then we'll bring it back downstairs. Chris Knight, catch fans. Oh. Chris Knight, catch fans .com. Elliot, how important was it for you to leave Daytona with the points lead and momentum taking into Atlanta next week? Well, momentum's the, the main thing. Look, guys, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a great situation. Uh, a lot of people don't know the history of, of Dale Jr. and Kelly and myself, and we've known each other since we were teenagers. And uh, for our relationship to come full circle, and be at this race team and to see how much effort they have put into their program this winter. Uh, you know, show today, I think three of the top four were, were junior motorsports cars and I feel like we got some, some good stuff coming in the road. You know, the points lead is, is good, but it's all about, like just Joy just says, it's all about getting wins and that's what it's all about, man, especially with this chase format. But I could not be more proud of my guys. We had a lot of people here from one main today, a lot of them watching their first race ever uh, at, here, here at Daytona and they were very impressed with the racetrack and hopefully they were impressed with the way we ran all day. All right, we'll come up here to Matt, and then to Jerry, and then to Tom. Yeah, I wish I thought about that. 
Matt Weaver, AutoWeek.com. Uh, from the outside looking in, it seems like, Joey, that you were almost breaking the no push rule there on the last lap to where. That's what I was thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> that's what I thought. And I was going to say, Elliot. No one understands the push rule. That's what, that's that's what like I thought. like the cloud. No one understands the cloud either. <laughs> Do this interview on the protest. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, Elliot, with your situation, it seems like you guys were trying to adhere to the block rule. So I'm curious, was that the case? No, we won't. We were, I was trying to get Bubba to push me because I could. You know, you, look, you, you got to be as aggressive as you as you need to be to win these races. Nobody's going to give it to you. And we saw Joey does a good job. He, he's not tandem. He's pushing and getting off, pushing again, and, and really, really is good at it. So we were wanting to do the same thing on the inside, too, but it just wasn't working out. Your timing and everything, momentum, everything has got to be going forward at that time. And, and Casey and Joey had such a good run. That's why it seemed like they were able to, mm -hmm. to, to get a good push off. So I guess the question then for both of you guys – if that rule, if you guys do understand the rule, does it kind of go out the window on the last lap? Um, yeah, yeah I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, That's a tough question. it's a tough question for sure. You know, I, I think um, the, w the way it's explained to me is basically everyone on the last lap is pushing. So are they going to black flag the whole field? <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that's where it becomes uh, very challenging. At any time you have cars that are capable of doing something pretty amazing as far as being able to push and tandem and you tell the drivers not to, uh, that makes it uh, that real kind of tough, you know, because most of the time um, for the drivers, it's kind of do whatever you want, stay above the yellow line. You know, and tomorrow that's what we'll have. And the, the only difference is the cars can't get – as close as what these Xfinity cars can, and that's um, what allows that tandem to happen. The tandem can't even happen in the in the Cup Series because of the way the, the aero package is. But with these cars, you know, you can hook up just like we used to and push for laps. We can push for a whole run if we wanted to, um, but by the rules we can't. So it's such a um, it's such a fine line, and it's you know if you can stay you know close to them and come off an inch and go back on and go off an inch and go back on and, and that's basically what you want to do um you know you can start to make some headway but if you can uh, actually attach and go man it's so much better but uh you can't do that you know it's just a fine line of, of what's too much and what's you know what's actually moving it forward because if we didn't push all you would have is a single file line on the bottom and, and no one would be making the top work and quite frankly, it'd be a boring race. Um, so I believe the tandem, I like the tandem. If you want my opinion, I think the tandem's cool. I think it was a really cool race back in the day when it was like that. And uh, I think the way they have it now, they let us push just enough to make the second lane move, but it's never really enough to get it all the way up there. It's really hard to make that happen. Jerry Jordan, Performance Racing Network and Kicking the Tires. Joey, not rubbing salt in the wound here, but second three times, like you said. I know. Have you, <laughs> have you picked up anything that you can transfer over to defend your uh, D500 championship from last year? Yeah, well, I mean, th this race is just so different. You know, like I said, the aero package is so different. You learn nothing by running the Xfinity race here. Um, the, what I do gain is just more time with my spotter, you know, and we can just communicate and talk more and, and keep, uh, you know, get that lingo going and all. And, and, and fortunately enough, we've been able to race a lot um, throughout this whole Speed Weeks, which has been a lot of fun. But, um, you know, I, I feel like we're doing a really good job, and I, and I watch these races and um, back over, and, and we've lost them in a different way every time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, these last two have probably been the closest. I feel like we're getting closer. I almost got to the outside of Junior in, in our duel. This time I actually got to the outside of the 88. Different driver, same number. And then, uh, you know, hopefully tomorrow I can actually get in front of it by the start-finish line. That would be really cool. But, um you know, hey, if, uh, like I said, second isn't nothing to really hold your head down about. We've had a great speed week. There's a lot of people, if you gave them three second place finishes uh, throughout all the speed weeks, they take it in a heartbeat, believe me. But um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not taking it for granted by no means, but I really want to win. They don't give trophies for second place. You know, I, I'd much rather have three trophies sitting next to me right now. All right, we're going to go and to Tom. Elliot, sorry, Thank but you, you can sit here too. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go to Tom and then Jared and then Ken. Hi, Joey. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. You have very loyal fans on Twitter. They're already complaining that if Joey would have thrown a block like Chase did, that would have been dirty driving. Do you think the contact in there was clean? <laughs> did you have any problem with it? I had no problem with it. That's what, uh, that's what I expect. I'm a racer. Um, I expect him to make the move to make sure I don't win. 
That's what he should do. He do exactly what he's supposed to do. The same thing that I would do, uh, and wouldn't expect any uh, repercussions back. Uh, that's racing. That's what uh, our fans pay money to come see. That's what they come to this beautiful facility to watch. Great racing, and uh, that's what we saw today. Uh, I don't have any problems with the the way we raced at the end. I think uh, he did everything right. We made some contact. I wish I didn't because that would have given me enough momentum maybe to win the race, but. Uh, unfortunately, um, that contact just stopped my car, and then, then I had no momentum after that. Thank you. We'll go to Jared and then to Ken. FoxSports.com, Jared Turner. Uh, questions for Elliot. Elliot, what has impressed you <clears throat> the most about junior motorsports so far? And do you feel like perhaps this is your best opportunity ever to win the championship this year? Well, <clears throat> the, the biggest thing that's impressed me is just uh, – Dale and Kelly are very uh, vested in that race team. I mean, they, they're they involved heavily. Uh, they have a direct line of Hendrick Motorsports, which never hurts. Um, I didn't realize there was that much support uh, when I first started kind of going over there at the end of last season. And uh, they, they made some really good hires this winter and brought in some, um, I think, some talented people and beefed up the body shop a little bit and, and have done some really great things. So I've, I've been in very impressed on, on, on the family atmosphere and the race. It's a lot of racers over there, I think, that do it for the fun of it and do it for the love of the sport. And uh, that seemed to have um, impressed me the most, most so far. We seem to be very prepared, uh, not only for here, but for Atlanta and Vegas and Phoenix and stuff coming up with the cars that we have lined up. The guys have done a really good job of making sure we're prepared to the best of our ability going in each week. And I think that will show uh, in speed when we show up at the racetracks. Go to Ken. Joey, the replays from the front uh, looking through the windshield of the final, when you guys came to the checkers, Chase was working hard to keep control of that of that car. How would you rate the contact between the two of you there? Is, it, is that enough to normally make somebody lose it or, or were you surprised that neither of you lost it? Or uh, I'm sure you know, you've know you been on both sides of that. How would you rate the, the give and take that was going on coming down there? Typical for the last lap coming there for checkered flag. <laughs> you know, uh, the contact was, uh, I was behind him pushing him. So there's contact there. Um, and then obviously, you know, if you watch his hands, uh, I'm sure he's trying to keep me behind him as well. So some of those moves are to, to keep me behind him. So he's working his car back and forth uh, to keep me behind him. And then when I got next to him, uh, you know, he tried to go for the block as well. And then that's when we touched. And then, of course, when he touches, he's going to have to steer. And, you know, like I said earlier, totally acceptable. Um, you know, is, is that enough to, to crash someone? No, if I was on the inside of him, I would have hooked him. You know, but the fact that we're turning to left, everything was fine. Go ahead, Zach. Uh, Zach, it's really fun stretch. This can be for both of you. Um, kind of describe how different it is when strategy comes to play on a plate track rather than on a short track or intermediate. How much different is it when strategy comes to play? Well, I just think the, the biggest strategy today, what, what we found out, is trying to keep track position. You know, put enough fuel in the car to where you stay in the pit box the least amount of time that you can. I think both of us learned one time we had to restart in the back because a bunch of cars stayed out. We kind of got trapped in the middle and three wide and all of that. And, after that, my team decided to stay on pit road the least amount of time that you can. Tires are not a big issue here, like they're on a short track. So we wanted to get in. We didn't take any tires there at the end. We wanted to get in and get off pit road and stay up front as much as we can. We felt like that was the best chance for us to have an opportunity to win this race. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You know, um, obviously when a caution comes out seven laps into a run and then one a few laps later, it's going to mix it up. Uh, and I tell you, well, I don't know about you, but I didn't feel very comfortable when I we were did. back there. I was, yelling. <laughs> I was not pushing anyone in front of me. I wanted to get to the top, and you got up there, but I, I couldn't find a hole. And uh, so, you know, we just kind of took that run as a loss, and uh, eventually kind of cycled through. And, and then once we got a single file, I started you know try to leapfrog a couple and kind of pass one and cut back in the hole. See, you got us in that problem because we were on the bottom, and you went to the middle. And I'm like, man, I'm going with Joy to the middle. He must yeah. know something. And then the 46, the 46 was sitting there. And then I'm like. Man, what'd you get us into here? We're stuck in the middle three that wide. That was a bad move. And I was like, we're not going to make it. We're not, we're not going to make it. I thought we were going to crash. I wasn't even wide open. I didn't want no I part didn't of either. it. I was I waving at the window. The hula was behind me. Get I saw away the guys moving on the top. I got to get up there, and then there was never a hole. And so, so keep track sorry. position. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll take another question in the middle. Uh, David Swope, BSPN, uh, Albuquerque. Uh, question for Elliot. Um, did you have a plan um, on, on the last race or on the, the last lap there 
actually to make a, a, a move on Chase yeah. and, and lock your position in? or uh... Oh, definitely we had a plan. And, and the position I was sitting in was my spotter was giving me, letting me know what the 22 and the 5 were doing because they were making some time on the outside. So he was giving me play-by-play -play on what those guys are doing. And then I was trying to figure out, because Chase was leading, and yes, I'm his teammate, but one of his best friends in the whole garage is Bubba Wallace, who was running third. So I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> if I, so he, he knows, that's why he's laughing. If I pull out, I have a feeling Bubba's going to stay with Chase. So I need to try to figure out what to do. So my plan was to do the exact same thing Joey did, was to push Chase all the way to turn four and then try to make a move one way or the other to try to win the race. If you popped up in front of me, I would have went with you. <laughs> Oops. See, <laughs> man, you tell me. <laughs> so uh, at 22, those guys did a good job of getting to our door in the turn one a lot faster than I thought they were going to get there. I thought we were going to be able to stall them out behind us and Chase and I could get away, but... Joey and Casey had such a good run, it kind of trapped us behind uh, Chase. And then when he moved up, then, of course, your strategy changes. But going with four, you know, five, four, three, two laps to go in the race, I was trying to just position myself to get a run so I could make a move off turn four, kind of the same thing that, that happened anyway, just two, just two different players. All right, we'll take a final question from Kelly. I was scared you were going to split me if I moved up. <laughs> Y'all running so fast. You had big speed. Yeah. By, maybe by then. Maybe. Yeah, I was like, you're going to split me if I move up. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Kelly Crano from PopularSpeed.com. For Elliot, you've been with some of the top teams in the Xfinity Series. You're now with the defending series champions. Do you feel like you have to still – are you have to still try to improve yourself? Do you feel any pressure to, to kind of – prove anything well, or? nobody's going to put more pressure on me than myself to be honest with you and i think since i've been in the xfinity series the last five years no matter what team i've been for i think i got more poles and just as many wins as anybody any other regulars in the series so i think that's a pretty good stat so no matter where we've been yeah i would have liked to run a little bit better last year that's uh, probably the most disappointing season i've ever had in the xfinity series points and top fives top tens poles everything um, but a couple of years before that, I felt like we were strong and, and ran up front and won some races. And I just, I really feel comfortable with the position. I mean, as far as proving some, yeah, I got to prove some to myself. That's it. You know, nobody has more fire out there looking at me than I have in myself. And, uh, you know, I have a little chip on my shoulder that, and I think every driver does that you want to go out there and you want to win, you want to run up front, and you want to do good, and you want to get uh, the finishes that you feel like that, uh, that, that you earn. So that's kind of where I'm at as a person right now. All right, Joey, Elliot, thanks for coming in here today. And, Joey, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys.